Dodge City and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with the U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Dylan, on evenings like this, I feel kindly towards everybody. Uh, is that so, Chester? <clears throat> yes, sir. It's a peaceful. There's no cowboys who on up and down front street, no shooting, no fights, almost no nothing. <laughs> well, that doesn't upset you, does it? Oh, my, no, Mr. Dillon. I like it this way. Puts me some in mind of Texas. Texas? Well, now, Mr. Dillon, I don't mean there isn't some dust raising done down there from time to time. <laughs> but sometimes Waco don't cool off from sunset to sunup. <laughs> That's so. Yes. Well, I'm going to walk down to the Texas Trail, Chester, and have a beer with Kitty. Well, sir, I'll just sit here and think. Son. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I'll come get you if anything happens. <laughs> yeah, you do that, Chester. Kitty. I was uh, kind of looking for you. Oh, you got time for a beer? Sure. You want to go over to a table? Oh, the bar's cooler. Uh, Sam, set up some beer for me and Miss Kitty, will you? Why, sure, my son. Here you are. It's kind of quiet in here tonight. Uh, the whole town's quiet, Matt. Too hot for trouble, maybe. Uh, sometimes heat brings trouble, Kitty. Makes people ouchy. <laughs> Kitty, bring your beer and come over to the table. I need more luck. Sorry, Webb, I can't right now. Of course you can. Come on. I said I'm sorry, Webb. Your friend will wait for you. Sure. Webb, this sure. is Marshal Dillon, Webb Johnson. How are you? Marshal, you won't mind if I take Kitty away for a while, will you? I think Miss Kitty gave you her answer. I heard what she said. But maybe she feels kind of obligated to stay, seeing as you're a marshal. I don't figure my being a peace officer has anything to do with what Miss Kitty decides. Maybe not. But most girls know which side of their bread the butter's on. You better get back to your poker game. Okay. But come over to the table, Kitty, when you're free. How long has he been around here? A uh, couple of days. Maybe more. You know anything about him? Not much. Why, he's poker mostly. He doesn't drink too much. Gambler? Well, I don't know if that's his profession, but he likes cards, and he's lucky. <laughs> Figures he is quite a way with women, too. Oh? With you? <laughs> he tries. We were talking last night. He offered me a job. Job? He says he's bought out the Longhorn Saloon. Wants me to come over and be his hostess there. Figures maybe some trade would follow me over. So he bought out the Longhorn, huh? Mm-hmm. He must have some money with him. He's not short. Yeah, he's talky enough to cause trouble sooner or later. Oh, don't mind him, Matt. Yeah. Well... Oh, I better get back to the office. Will I see you later, Matt? Uh, no, I don't think so, Kitty. I got to work. Good night. You sure you don't want to eat, Chester? Uh, no, sir. Thank you, kind of, Mister Dillon, but I already ate. Oh. 
I, I think I'll just walk on down to the depot, maybe. The depot? Yes, sir. Chester, what in the world do you do down there? Oh, Mr. Hightower and me just sort of sit around and socialize. Then besides, there's a train due in. Sometimes there's all sorts of things. <laughs> all right, Chester, I'll see you later. Yes, sir. Now, oh, Jimmy, cook me up some potatoes, will you? Uh, three or four eggs and some of that side meat. Yes, sir, Marshal. It's the Marshal, ain't it? Well, good morning, Mr. Webb. Unless you're expecting company, you could ask me to sit with you. Well, I don't mind. Well, thank you. How'd you make out last night? In the poker game or with Kitty? That cards. <laughs> Seems like everything I say is that you on edge, Marshal. Maybe. Well, I'll tell you, Kitty and I didn't quite hit it off, but I done fine at the start. Those boys, Ashton and Trasker, they play cards like boys. Afraid to push their luck. Sometimes that's good. Not at poker, it ain't. At least as I walked home last night with their money in my pocket. Over 500. Ah, that's good winnings. It wasn't hard. Miss Kitty tells me that uh, you bought the Longhorn. News traveled, don't it? You a gambling man? I don't make my living playing cards, if that's what you mean. Are you going to keep on the same boys that are at the Longhorn now? No, Marshal, I'm not. I've got my own way of doing things. Those boys might not understand. So I've got two dealers coming in this morning from St. Louis. We worked together before. Here's your breakfast, Marshal. Fried up some onions for good measure. They kind of bring out the flavor of the eggs some. Oh, thank you, Jimmy. You want beer, coffee? Uh, coffee, I think. Mm -hmm. Bring the pot over. I'll have some, too. Yes, sir. You don't like me much, do you, Marshal? No. Why not? Why don't you like me? Well, for one thing, you talk too much. That may be. Let me give you some advice, Mr. Webb. This is an easy town to get killed in. So I've heard. So see to it that the Longhorn runs smooth and easy, huh? Speaking of gambling. Gambling or girls. Well, now, Marshal, there's a lot of money in Dodge these days, what with the trail hurts and the buffalo and all. I'd feel kind of bad if I didn't get my share of it. The money that changes hands in the Longhorn is your business as long as it's honest. You just tell your St. Louis dealers to remember that. You're my preachy for Marshall, ain't you? I'm not interested in the morals of the citizens individually. But when it affects the peace of the whole town, it is my business. Well, now, from the way you talk, I don't imagine you'd be interested in the percentage deal. Or would you? Get out of here. And remember what I said. Why, well, sure. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing, Marshal. That star on your chest, don't scare me one bit. Well, good morning, Miss Russell, and how are you this morning? I swear, I don't understand that Webb Johnson. Uh, sit down, Kitty. Have some coffee. Huh? <laughs> That's why I came by. I figured you'd be eating when there was no one at the office. Uh, Chester's down at the depot waiting for the train. Anything important, Matt? No, just the train. <laughs> he likes trains. <laughs> um, Matt, I had a long talk with Webb last night. No? Yeah, after the game broke up, he bought me some drinks. He say where he was from, Kitty? Uh, Missouri. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon! Yeah, what is it, Chester? Oh, you should have seen it, Mr. Dillon. My gracious alive. The train no sooner come to a stop. Hello, Miss Kitty. Oh. The train no sooner come to a stop and they begun getting off. Must be 15 or 20 of them. 15 or 20 what? Chester? Girls, Mr. Dillon. Girls in no time at all. The depot platform was just plain crawling with them. Well, they're going to work at the Longhorn. The Longhorn? That's right, Chester. Webb Johnson's bought it. It's those are new hostesses. Yeah, they're from St. Louis, Chester. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. It fair gives a man the shakes to see so many women all at one time. <laughs> <laughs> well, they'll keep, I think. Uh, you can go on back to the depot if you want. I'll see you later. Well, don't you want to come look, Mr. Dillon? 
Like he says, Chester. They'll keep. And it was just two nights later that the Longhorn opened. With drinks on the house. First come, first served. It was about the biggest night Dodge had seen since the opera house was built. Webb Johnson stood with his back to a bar that was loaded with hard-boiled eggs, fried onions, dried beef, pickles, while six bartenders tried to keep the thirst of Dodge in check. Chester and I sat back where I could watch the dice table and the new dealers. But it wasn't a night for trouble. Well, Marshal Dillon. So you come to pay us a visit on opening night. Hello, Webb. Not drinking, Marshal. It's on the house, you know. Uh, not tonight, thank you. <laughs> Too bad. I've always made it a practice never to turn down anything free. Well, how about your friend here? Yeah, well, yes, sir. I could use a little whiskey uh, with some sugar in it. I'll send one over to you. Oh, Marshal. Yes, sir. Just by the way, you won't have to worry too much about my cheating the good citizens of Dodge out of their money. From what I've seen of them, it won't be too hard to take. I'll get one of the boys to bring you back that way. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Dillon, I know you don't like him, but in some ways he's not too bad, is he? Chester, don't ever judge a man by the drinks that he buys you. I'll see you in the morning. Turn to the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, $10 seems like a small amount of money when weighed in the balance of a child's life. Yet a $10 care package, food or clothing, to the war orphans of Korea could easily save a child's life. These children have no parents, homes, or source of food. They are begging for just enough to eat. A contribution in any amount will help. Send it to your local care office, or to CARE New York, or CARE Los Angeles. Now, the second act of Gunsmoke. More than two weeks passed in Dodge, and there wasn't any trouble to amount to anything. A couple of buffalo skinners got knifed in a fight to the other side of the river, and that was all. I saw Webb Johnson a couple of times walking along Front Street, each time with one of his new entertainers. But I avoided going into the Longhorn unless I had to. I didn't want any part of him or his saloon. Chester. Chester. <clears throat> hey! Oh! Yeah. Good evening, <laughs> Mr. Dillon. Good evening, Chester. I, I wasn't really sleeping, Mr. Dillon. I, I was just resting my eyes some. Oh, is that so? <laughs> yes, you see, I come back to the office after supper and kind of straightened out your paper some, and, and I just sat down at your desk to read a few reports, and I guess maybe my eyes got a mite strain. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Chester, uh, the way you've been working lately, are you after my job? Oh, Mr. Dillon, I wouldn't never be able to do that. Well, I've been a little worried about it. You've been patrolling the town an awful lot at night lately. Oh, that. Well, <laughs> to tell the truth, Mr. Dillon, I'd, I've been keeping company, you might say. Oh? Yes, sir. One of them 
I, I think she cottons to me some. <laughs> Olive Hasty, her name is. Olive Hasty, huh? She one of the girls from St. Louis? Yes, sir, but she isn't like the others. Oh, she's just as nice and polite. Why, she told me the other night that all she wants to do is find some nice place and settle down. Oh. She purely hates being in this sort of business. She's one of the finest... Marshal Gillum? Oh, yes, that's right. My name's Cook. <laughs> Sorry, Cook. Mr. Cook? I was thinking maybe you could help me. Well, perhaps I can. I'm looking for a man. I heard he took a train for Dodge about two weeks back. Oh? Well, what's his name? He called himself Sam Williams last time I saw him. Don't know what name he uses now. Oh, there are two or three Williamses in Dodge, Mr. Cook. Oh? What did this man you're looking for have to mark him out? Oh, nothing special. He's a young man, Marshal, maybe 35, 6. Big, too, with dark hair and black eyes. Well, that wouldn't fit any of the Williams men I know. His name wouldn't have to be Williams. Yeah. Now, just why are you looking for this man? I'm going to kill him. That's a funny thing to tell a U.S. Marshal, isn't it, Mr. Cook? I guess it is, Marshal, but I got my reasons. Well, do you mind telling me? No. I've seen a lot of gunfights in my time, and most always there's someone gets killed that had nothing to do with the argument. I figure it's best to stay away from people if there's got to be shots fired. So? So when I came into Dodge, I figured I'd find out from you if this man was here, and you could tell him to get out of town. I could kill him then out on the prairie somewhere. I see. Are you sure you'll kill him? It could work both ways, you know. Oh, I know that, but I'm an old man, so I don't have as much to lose. Why is it you want this William so bad? What did he do? It's not too long a story, Marshal. He was a Missouri raider after the war. He and some other fellow come down to my farm one night. He took most everything we had, my wife and I... He was all pretty drunk, I guess. My daughter, she was about 17 then. She was... She... Well, it's not a new story, Marshal. No. Yeah. I didn't have too much reason for staying on there in Missouri, and I've been following this man ever since. Not too fast sometimes, because it <laughs> takes money to eat and travel, but I've been following. You think he came to Dodge? That's right, Marshal. I see. Are you staying here, Mr. Cook? I got me a room for tonight at the Dodge house. Maybe I'll be there for a day or so while I look around. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll remember what you've told me, Mr. Cook. Well, thank you, Marshal. I <clears throat> sure, sure hope I don't make you any trouble over this. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, yeah, I know, Chester. I think it's Webb Johnson, too. Well, what are you going to do? I'll try to get Webb to leave town for a few days until I can get Cook there headed out somewhere else on a false trail. But if that Webb Johnson really did that, shouldn't he go to jail or at least go to trial? We don't know what happened to the Cook farm other than what he just told us. My guess is he won't ever tell us any more. He figures it's his business to take care of in his own way. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to go down to the Longhorn. Have a talk with Webb. <laughs> Webb, I want to talk to you. Well, sure, Marshal. What's on your mind? Now, let's step down to the end of the bar, huh? <laughs> now you sound like a peace officer talking. Move. Sure. You look mighty serious, Marshal. What's troubling you? A 
few minutes back, a man came into my office. He's looking for you. That so? He knows you by the name of Sam Williams. Most folks know me by the name of Webb Johnson. Your man must be thinking of someone else. I don't think so. You could have changed your name. Lots of men have. And you fit the description he gave. Suppose I am the one this man is looking for. What then? What's he want with me? He plans to kill you. I see. What are you going to do with him? Nothing. He doesn't even know you're in town. He came to ask me if you were. He's got a strange way of doing things. Well, he may have his reason. <laughs> now, why are you telling me this, Marshal? Because you'd probably be just as happy if I got shot in the back. Look, Webb, I want you to get out of town. Give me a chance to steer Cook out into the territory someplace. Get him clear of Dodge. What for? That way we can avoid more killing. <laughs> you don't have to worry about me. I can take care of myself. <laughs> Look, Webb, I'm telling you, get out of town for a while. So I ain't got no plans for leaving? <laughs> Sam Williams. Hello, Si. I've come a long way, Sam. I'm moving away from him, Marshal. Now listen to me, Si. Now you turn around and go back out that door. I don't want any gunplay. And you turn around slow. No use, Marshal. I found Sam Williams. And I'm going to kill him. Now, Cy, listen to me. I don't want Move you... Move away from me. Let's go on! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! He's dead, isn't he? Yeah, he's dead. Well, he was bound to get himself hurt sooner or later. He was crazy as a hooty owl. Who did this, Webb? Well, why do you ask me that, Marshal? Because Cook told me why he held a grudge against you. Why he was looking for you. You mean that story about the farm and his daughter at all? <laughs> well, now, what about it, Marshal? You couldn't prove nothing now, even if it was true. <laughs> All right. All right, a couple of you men drag this outside and dump it in the street. And you three. You'll carry Cook up to Doc's place. Webb Johnson, Mr. Dillon? Chester. Cy Cook was shot just five minutes ago. He hurt bad? He's dead. Oh, my goodness. Webb Johnson? No, I was standing beside Johnson. It was somebody outside. Well, can't we go after him? Oh, there's no use at night. He could take 20 directions out of town. Tomorrow's time enough. Marshal Dillon. Why, oh, Miss Olive, what in the oh, world? Come here. You'll come after me. I've got to talk to you. Well, what is it, Miss? I climbed out a back window and came right over. I know who Webb paid to kill that man. What's that? I was in Webb's room with him when he got the kid drunk and paid him the money. What kid? They called him Slim, that's all I know. It was maybe 16. I thought it was just a joke. I, I didn't know Webb really was going to have a man killed. When was this? Early this evening. One of the dealers came and told Webb he'd seen Cook in town. That's when it started. You remember what Webb said to the kid? Yes. Is it worth a horse and a hundred dollars to you to shoot a man? The kid was drunk and he laughed and said, what color was the horse? You'd swear to this in a court. Marshal, I'm scared. If I thought about it, I wouldn't have come. Maybe Webb will have someone shoot me. <laughs> All right, take it easy now, miss. Now, look, you'll be safe here. You're not going to leave me here. Chester, get me that shotgun. <laughs> yes, sir. And take one for yourself. Am I going with you? Yeah, come on. Oh, Marshal Johnson. You stay here now. All right. 
right, Chester, climb up on the bar. And shoot the first man that makes the move. Yes, sir. You two men, you dealers. Get over against the wall. Now go on, belly up. I'll cut you in half. You make a move. All right, now where's Johnson? I said, where's Johnson? Where is he? He's upstairs, Marshal. In the office. All right, Soros, you're deputized. Stand by the door there. No one goes in or out. Chester, I'm going upstairs. I've been expecting you, Marshal. Be no need to come upstairs. I'll meet you halfway. <laughs> your choice, Webb, like any other man. I'm young, Marsh. I haven't had time enough. I didn't want to kill you. Marsh. Marsh. I'm scared. Now I'm scared. Marsh. All right, gentlemen, cut loose and ride for home. Until further notice, the Longhorn Saloon's closed. Gunsmoke. Transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dubkin, John Daner, Howard McNear, and Charlotte Lawrence. Parley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Plasma is saving many lives that would otherwise be lost at the fighting front in Korea, but the reserve of plasma is almost exhausted. To make sure that an adequate supply is on hand at all times, the Defense Department is asking all of us to contribute blood to the armed forces. You can do so by making an appointment for this life-saving contribution at your local Red Cross or blood donor center. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.